So howdy. Um, every spring it's uh, one of the first tasks after we do firewood is going through our equipment and figuring out what doesn't work this year. And uh, our internationals giving us a problem. We've rebuilt this carburetor three times. The jets in it are it was stripped out by someone who previously worked on it. We can't get at them. I've always got fluid to flow through them, but we're sick of dicking with this one. So we picked up a uh, brand new replacement. And now we're going to take the old one out and put this one in. Um, last year we put a starter on this. Um, hopefully, new carb, this thing will run. You know, we're looking at sometime in the next year, two years, replacing our big tractors, um, our big tractor here, and getting something newer. Um, so we'll see how that all pans out. But uh, we, we need this to mow the lawn. That's our biggest task for it. We mow, we mow probably four acres of total lawn. So doing it with anything else is a bit of a pain. So this is a brand new Zenith. Um, it's universal, so you can switch the things from side to side. Um, move the fuel fitting onto this one right over here. Um, throttle linkage is in the right place. Uh, choke, we're going to have to reverse. Um, our choke goes on the other side. So, let's get to it. So one of the first things we're going to do is remove the air cleaner. Which is right here. You don't have to, and we've done it without doing it before. It's just easier with it gone. Um, and then after you get the air cleaner gone, there's two bolts, and they designed these things back when people didn't think about how easy they were to take on and off, because they're actually up against the manifold, so you gotta kinda back them off a little bit at a time. We've already removed the throttle linkage and the choke linkage. Okay, so we got the air cleaner out. Now you can see the carburetor all by itself. Like I said, these bolts up top here, you gotta back these off, and the manifold's in the way. So you can only back them up so much. sections. And there's no way to get like a, a ratchet on these just because the manifold in the way. You can't get to the top of them. There's two studs that go into the carburetor. Is that a half inch for the gas line too? Yep. Gas is turned off? Yep. Can you get a little resi residual? Yep. So we've done this without taking the air cleaner off. It's a lot easier with it removed. We got a cable or something on the back. The throttle linkage to the governor's in the back. And we got a pin, so I need a pair of pliers. Yep. Thank you.
Try to straighten that pin out. Okay, pins out. It actually has a piece of bailing twine. And that's the old carb. So we gotta take fuel fitting off, put on the new one, take the choke set up on the new one, convert it to the right side, and then match everything up with the linkage and how it works with this one. So here are the two carbs side by side. And the new one is designed to be universal, so the fittings are adjustable um, for the throttle and for the choke. Um, and it comes with extra thread on both sides so that you can switch it from both sides. You can cut the extra thread off if you want. Um, and you can switch the throttle linkage around, um, which we probably will, so we have a hole in the bottom instead of the slot. And uh, move the choke to the other side. Um, here you can see the old one. So it also comes with a uh, adapter for the end here that can press in and I don't think we're going to need it. Like I said it's designed for a lot of different tractors. They use this carburetor on many tractors which is good that means it's available. If they didn't we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't have been able to find it because they didn't make a, they only made about two or three thousand of these tractors. So that they use this engine on all kinds of things. C one two three. Um, the engine's pretty common. So that's a benefit to this particular tractor is the engine's common. So you can get all the parts of the engine um, fairly easy. So let's uh, we're gonna reverse the throttle linkage and the choke linkage and uh, then we'll be back. Okay, so here's the reconfigured carb. Thro uh, fuel input has been installed. Had a, a bolt in here. I said it's universal, so we put the, it has three openings for fuel. We put that bolt in here. It has one more over here, depending on your configuration. You can change it around. Um, choke linkage. It's now hooked up to the side that we need it on. So we had to take the butterfly out, reverse the shaft, and then reassemble. And the throttle linkage, we needed the hole at the bottom. And we think this is about the same angle we had before. If I compare it to the old carburetor, yeah, it's about the same angle. That, that one's longer, so we'll see. We might have to play with it a bit. Let me get in the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. This is the way the old one works. And the shaft on the new one is longer, the, the lever. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see. So now we're going to reinstall on the tractor. Here goes nothing. So we're having balls of fun here. We have the carburetor back on. And we're still not getting it to start. So, we know we had carb issues, so that's, that's done, but uh, we were looking at, you know, the next thing on the line was the ignition, and uh, we're looking at the points here. Um, that uh, part on the right is wrong. It's not, uh, it, it, it's, it's messed up. It shouldn't have that big hole in the middle, the big divot. Um, it's a... Uh, Needs to be replaced. So, we're off to go see if our local parts store has a set of these or something that'll fit. Um, but uh, it should look like that on the end. See how it's pad? There should be one of those, and instead, what I have is that nub, um, which won't 
work right. Uh, it can happen if you leave the key on these old tractors. They don't turn the electrical system off. And that's probably what happened here. So, let's see if we can go find a part. And instead of feeler gauges, because we don't have a set down here. Okay, so we have everything back together. We put new points in. Luckily our local shop had points. Um, and put the carburetor back on. Let's see if it fires up. And we have liftoff. I do a victory lap. That thing's purring like a kitten. A 50-year-old kitten. That's a 63. So, yeah, 51 years old this year. And it still works well. But we always have to tinker with it. Okay, so in truthfulness, we actually had it started. We knew it would start. <laughs> we spent the last uh, two hours putting the carburetor on and off three times. Um, so for, for reference, I know also has a tractor like the, one of these 240s. In order to get the carburetor off, always take the air cleaner out. It's a thousand times easier. It's only two bolts. Um, they're kind of a pain to get the bolts on and off, but it's a thousand times easier. Uh, with this retrofit carb, because it's universal, we, we ended up, it wasn't, the reason we took it on and off three times was it wasn't responding to throttle response very good. Um, we cut the shaft on the uh, on the inbound engine side, but we didn't cut it enough. It was touching. And then the throttle lever itself, we had to bend a little bit because the throttle linkage to the governor on the front was uh, hitting the housing. So we had to bend that out a little bit. Um, we could also ground the that rod probably down, but we don't have a grinder handy and you know, we could bend things. Okay, so there's the new carburetor installed. It looks pretty similar to the old one. There's a couple differences, but nothing major. Um, that rag on there is because when we have the side body panel, uh, that hydraulic line rubs up against it. So without the rag, it will wear through. Um, but this thing starts now without choke. It just fires right up, which is awesome. It always required choke uh, in order to start. This thing is firing. You know, when we, after not having it fire so many times for, for, from goofing around with it, we were kind of surprised when it when it kicked off. Um, I mean, that wasn't the carb that was causing it. The carb was making it run smooth. Um, the points were just totally bonked. Um, one of the uh, the pads was off. So I'm going to go to the other side and show you a couple things over there. So right there where I have all that tape, that is the uh, distributor for this tractor. Um, anyone with a 240 knows what it is. Uh, in order to service it, um, I didn't go through it. It's, we're kind of just figuring it out because we've never done this one before. Um, label all your plugs so you know where to put them. So I, we put tape on everything so we know where to put them back. Um, rotating the, uh, the, um, the shaft so that you can do the points to gap them. Big screwdriver in the bottom of the tractor in the hole if it goes to the flywheel, which is really dark in here, you can advance it slowly. We tried doing it with a starter, just moving a little bit at a time, and we couldn't get it to uh, we couldn't get it to line up. So, yeah, this thing's purring like a kitten. We're gonna put it away because it's raining, but uh, it's gonna get some lawn mowing uh, work in the next couple days.
It's running as smooth as ever ran. And I don't have to lie and say that uh, when we put that carburetor on, it didn't start back up. I was kind of a bit worried. So, Happy I was able to figure out what was wrong and get it fixed and find the parts locally. So until next time, thanks for watching.